Hello and welcome to a new episode of Critical Coffee Considerations with me, Francis Beck. Today I want to discuss density, ways to measure it and how to use it in your roasting. Now I want to do this specifically because I've been having trouble roasting this Indonesia beans coming from Enrican Latimeon, Sulawesi. I like that it is direct trade. Um, it's basic blend honey processing. But most of the time I kind of get an earthy flavor in it. And I'm still not even sure if what I call earthy might be a baked flavor. I'm not sure about it. Um, this espresso shot I did with 9 grams and the roast at the highest temperature that Magini Cafe allowed, 250, as a setting um, for 12 minutes and it actually reached 236 degrees as a maximum. Um, but still, still those kind of earthy flavors are inside. Kind of very fruity notes also. But it's a pity when, when you're not able to uh, get rid of certain tastes, let's say. Um, now I did a finer grind and I got about 19.1 grams out of uh, this 9 grams of coffee in. Actually going for more ristretto-like earthy component is also less so it's not that I can get around it but I kept wondering what is it about this coffee that makes it more difficult or so difficult for me to roast at least with my genie cafe and recently I tried to have a consistent way of measuring density and to do that I went for inspiration here. This is a uh, not product placement. I I don't recommend Nutella. I personally don't think it's too healthy, but I am addicted to it. And that's why I then actually buy the small pots because at least you get something out of it when they're empty. And that's an empty glass, very, Useful also if you have young kids running around. These tend to break, but the glasses you buy in the shop also break, and at least this one you kind of get for free. Of course, very occasionally for a big celebration, or because in this case, it just happened to have my place of work, my botanic garden on, on the front. That was just... Uh, well, impossible to resist. But seriously now, the advantage is, this is a very consistent volume. You can get 250 milliliters of water in here. Um, and then how many beans can you get in here? That will depend on their density. Uh, so I went over this, like my Brazil beans that are very easy to get an espresso roast with. I got 171.7 grams in here. Then we have, in the neighborhood of that, we, we actually have uh, Papua New Guinea, that was 172.3, and I get similar roasting experiences with it. Let's say, I mean, Brazil is a little bit on its own because they tend to scorch kind of easily. So probably we're on a low density side here. And then we have Guatemala, 172.7. Now Ethiopia is already a little bit escaping this, which is 175.9 grams that went inside. And for Indonesia, that really was a top runner, 177.9 grams. Now you can measure this density with, with the green beans, just like this. 
or you can also see what happened during your roasting and of course your density degrees is roasting because they expand now let me just quickly grab my scale and we can do an actual measurement and show you my process so if you want to compare your densities with mine the only thing is just for one time only get yourself a Nutella little container and then until you break it you have a very consistent 250 milliliter volume so here we go of course now you want to try and do this as consistent as possible so what I then do is kind of, you know, I go over with my finger like this and then, you know, it should be at a point where you, you're not able to push beans out. And if you do this for every green beans you have, or, you know, if you're not roasting at home yet, I mean, you could do it just to, to measure uh, the roasted beans that, that you bought. So here we have 101.1 grams. Now if we compare this to a roast where actually the temperature setting was 230 degrees for 13 minutes. Um, so it's a bit different. So of course this was 12 minutes set to 250 uh, but approaching 236 after this 12 minutes. Any rate, um, so it's um, 80.3 grams for the Brazil. So when I did it with Indonesia, because I have the data for that also. So when I measured the green density was 177.9 and then it went after roasting to 106.7. So now the temperature increase of 250 does seem to have get that density bit uh, lower as we're now at 101.1 grams and it was 106.7 grams also the highest density after roasting now I, I looked I looked it up um, so density and altitude they correlate very highly there are other things that can influence your density the way it was processed so in this case the the, the honey, basic blend honey, um, that processing will influence you know the way the beans are drying, uh, how they were stored and how old they are. They can all influence that density. But the altitude, let's say it usually has the biggest impact on the density. And what we got reported here is is that it was according to the card between 1750 and 2000 100 meters but when I just google Enrican Latimoyong and uh, I look at the altitudes there's altitudes around 2000 but it's also going up to 2800 maybe even higher and then the thing that got me wondering is that so another problem it's, it's not just getting the density down while roasting getting them to expand more but it seems to be also a more uneven roast um, whatever way i try actually to roast them so it got me thinking the other thing that altitude tells you is that usually higher altitudes means also more variability in altitude because you can have stretches vast lands at no altitude like you know the low countries where we're presently at um, but as soon as you go to high altitudes you know they tend to fluctuate more so if the coffee is growing there there might be a couple of hundred meters difference between one coffee plant and other plants 
And then if you have like in this case, a village lot, where maybe all these beans are just being thrown together, that might already also create a bit more variance in your coffee and make them a bit more difficult to handle. Of course, you can also just get better coffees out of these. I mean, that's the general consensus. And the Ethiopia beans that I have that have a density quite close to it, about 175.9 as measured with the Nutella method. Um, those seem easier to me to, to roast and, and to then enjoy. Uh, I still need to try more things. So higher density means they, they're in theory better able to cope with heat. Lower density means there might be air pockets inside, I mean, on a micro scale, which kind of messes with the heat transfer during the roast. That might lead to scorching if you apply too much heat. But with high density, there's no place for air, I guess. Um, they're more resistant to the heat transfer, but you can apply more because it's, it's a more consistent heat transfer, if I'm getting that right. So in this experiment, I did also try with the preheating the Genie Cafe. Uh, I just did it for three minutes at 200 degrees. So the machine was just around 60 uh, when I actually loaded it. So I might just push that further because what I also discovered with the Genie Cafe is actually the heating element just seems to turn on and off. Now that I just went for the maximum of 250, the the progression of uh, the temperature as reported by the GC and by external measurements of the uh, of the Gini Cafe container, they were just extremely similar to when I set it to 230 or 235. So um, more experiments to be done. Get yourself a Nutella cup so you can compare with my measurements. I'll try to get them on my website between two coffees. Enjoy your coffees and your experiments and see you next time. Thanks for watching.